I'm Alex. And I'm Teddy. And I'm Spencer. And we are the Button Mappers. Hey, the Button Mappers. <laughs> What's that smell? Something smells rank. It's steak cooking in the kitchen. How do you like it, Alex? I'd like my snake to rattle and roll. That's funny, because usually... Spencer, how do you ask for your steak? I ask for it to be rare. <laughs> hey, what a coincidence! <laughs> because we're ranking that rare today. Woohoo! The 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 video's so nice, we've done it thrice. Yeah, this is our third ranking. I like this series. Yeah. Are you guys ready to argue? Put on your boxing gloves. Because <laughs> <laughs> we're going killer so, instinct uh, style. We got twenty rareware games or franchises. Though this is so strange because we're focusing on one company today, so like one developer you know whatever. So what we did was we either have series represented or a single game. Um, just games that we thought were important to Rare's overall history and a couple of questionable ones, but we'll get through it together. Yep, we're doing this because this is Rareware Month here on The Button Mappers, focusing on all things Rare, a uh, British video game company. Currently, we have The History of Rare, which is already posted, and a video with Brian. Where he talks about one of the games on this ranking today, which we will be talking about also. <laughs> Speaking of Brian, nice where else can you find Brian? Alex? Well, you can't find him on <laughs> Apple Podcasts or Spotify unless you're listening to the Button Mappers, because we're over there and he's been on a couple episodes. Uh, you can find Brian in the Discord. Uh, Brian's on Discord. Send him a message. Tell him to play Gex. That's from me. The Gex ending is happening. Uh, those are that, that's an okay place to find uh, to find Brian. But do you know what a better place to find Brian is? Don't answer that. It's YouTube. No, it's YouTube. <laughs> he is uh, uh, streaming away on YouTube, and we are having our videos on YouTube all the time as well. Every Monday and most Fridays, if I'm there. And so make sure you check us out there on YouTube. Uh, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. And uh, tell us how wrong we are with our rankings in the comment section below. As the ad says, it's about time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Please install ad blocker next ranking. Thanks, <laughs> uh, I missed the Pop-Tarts one, honestly. Uh, it's worth noting too that uh, uh, a lot of the the rarer rare games I did not actually play. Okay. Uh, I had my girlfriend play, and Whoa. she will be reviewing them for me. She has supplied <laughs> me with her extensive notes, uh, and so I I did not touch some of these games while we're reading straight from her her notes, so we get her opinion on some of these games. We're gonna have to argue with a, a notebook. <laughs> yes, and I and unfortunately, she while she teaches kindergarten, she shares their handwriting. So I will struggle my way through <laughs> figuring out what she tried to tell me. Okay, if there are disagreements, you're gonna have to be the ambassador as her. So like, we'll, we'll <laughs> argue with your girlfriend through you. Okay, cool. I'll be the conduit. Well, I say we should get. I'm I I dude. I'm rare in the go. Oh. Let's go. <laughs> let's, let's cook some steak. Make it <laughs> well done. Yes, no, nobody no, ever right. except for me. <laughs> but uh, I guess for everyone else, you get else, your we well done. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've been doing medium well because everyone's so disgusted by it. But you know what? I'm just gonna be me. <laughs> just be. I mean, you do you, man. But I'm just saying, ugh. <laughs> 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 you do you, but I'm just saying. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> you know, some people out there eat bugs. I eat steak. Well done. Be you. I eat bugs. <laughs> bugs life. Ready to kick it off? The, Get it? Oh my gosh! As that that zone. was a good pun because our first game <laughs> for series. Connect Sports. 
Oh, the, what everybody came to see here. Where are we <laughs> ranking? Please tell us how long everyone has played this game for. I'll start. Zero. Zero. Goose egg. I've played it maybe like 30 minutes. I'd say that's probably the cap. Oh, then you're the expert. Go ahead. Oh, the expert. <laughs> so there's three Kinect Sports games. Um, the Kinect, if you don't know what the hell that is, it was uh, the embarrassment that Xbox and Microsoft had on the 360, where it was a camera and you use your body to play games. And uh, I say about 25% of the games actually work, and 75% of the games are just garbage. Um, and, you know, the connect sports uh i'll give it this it actually worked for what it was but it's nothing i'm gonna play though <laughs> um it, so it's, like, it's 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 also sad because it's like it represents a time in rare's history where microsoft was like you're drunk give me your keys yeah definitely <laughs> you failed us you're in charge of connect sports rare. Yeah, connect connect sports. sports till 2016 this is what you're doing <laughs> oh, <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, I, I can't give it anything above a D. You good with that, Teddy? I don't have a. Uh, I can't. I have to concede the vote because I've never played it. <laughs> I will oblige yep. that rule. So, yeah. next sports has earned a D. I'm sure it's fine, but it's just what it represents. <laughs> We've certainly kicked off this. Uh, ranking in a very dirty way with a dirty D. Speaking of dirty games, let's talk about Conquer. Conquer oh, on the good. N64. <laughs> Conquer's bad fur day. Uh, so if you want to know more about the history, Alex talked about it last episode. I know it as kind of that raunchy game. I remember seeing one of my friends when I was like, you know, a youngin. In the preteen years, he owned this game even as a youngin, and he ended up kind of messed up. So I don't know if that's Rare's fault <laughs> or his parents or his. It's but Rare's fault. Uh, I remember being very intrigued by it. It had the first the N sixty four game was like almost kind of like parody esque. I remember seeing like a Matrix scene, uh, a lot of curse words. Uh, there's some sexy stuff. There's some shit jokes. Um, I tried playing it on the Rare Replay disc. And I don't know if I just haven't like gotten far enough in, but I compare it always to Banjo and like just in the back of my mind. And I'm like, this is not the same platforming that I know and love. And so I'm always kind of turned off by the gameplay of Conquer. I won't take away for what it is, but uh, maybe you guys want to do your rankings first and I'll come back and do mine. Or I'll just say a B. I'll give it a B. I yeah, respect it. Was... I respect it for what it is, um, but I don't think it's for me. Okay, Spencer, what's your? All right, my girlfriend's opinion because I've never played it. Um, she says it's for mature audiences only. She says it has the longest unnecessary intro ever. Thumbs down. <laughs> she says there are long cutscenes, too much talking. Had to go back to the beginning of game two times, not dying, but having to restart and go through all the world again. She gives it a C. <laughs> um, Conquer, I think it's interesting the point Teddy brings up with the game, like kind of compared to Banjo, because I think that's what they were trying to deviate from was, um, you know, the 12 Tales project was too close to a Banjo game. So I think their, their their idea was to take it in the opposite direction. Uh, Conquer is a very linear platformer, actually. Um, it's more focused on just telling jokes and being a, a funny game. Um, I think there is some clever humor in writing in the game. I don't know if the parodies parts stand up that well, like the Matrix parody. There's like an Alien 2 parody. There's a uh, a Saving Private Ryan parody. Like, like I don't know if those stand up as, as, as well now as they would have back in the day. But um, I still think some of the jokes land, um, and I don't think it's I don't think it's bad. I think it's a fun time. It's just not a collectathon. Um, I would agree with B. Okay. It's also worth noting that Live and Reloaded exists on the Xbox, and so does Conquer's Pocket Tales, which is came about before Conquer's Bad Fur Day, and is like 
the kiddie version of Conquer from Diddy Kong Racing. <laughs> yeah, for sure. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Kitty. Conquer Tales. Man. That it's Conquer fur is one time. Cra- Sorry. One crazy guy. He's a he's a bit of a killer. But if if you have if you have a killer instinct, you'll like this game. Killer instinct. <laughs> if you had a fur day, you'll like this game. It's Conquer. <laughs> <laughs> I'll I'll go first on this one because I have a very complicated relationship with Killer Instinct. I love fighting games, um, and Killer Instinct has great presentation. I love the music. I love the character designs. I am fucking garbage at the game, and I've never understood, like, fully understood, like, what's wrong with, like, me trying to play the game. I, I never, like, it just feels wrong, like, the combo system and the way the game plays. I never got used to it. Um, so as much as I want to enjoy Killer Instinct, I just don't enjoy the gameplay that much. Mm. Um, but I, I totally respect it for what it is, and people that actually like it, like, it, I'm sure it's a fun game. I just... Maybe I just haven't put too much time into it, but every every version that I've played has been the same. Where I, I'm like, this is cool music, and these are cool characters, and I start playing, and I get my ass kicked, and I'm like, what am I doing wrong? <laughs> like, am I, like, I've played fighting games before. <laughs> um, so, give it a, uh, God, I I'll give it a B. <laughs> All right, here are the notes I got. She played gold. Play play as Orchid, nice big butt. <laughs> One with her. She likes her butt. Uh, she called a regular fighting game. Can get more hits in faster than other fighting games. And then she asked a question. Same Saber Wolf from Saber Wolf Maze game? <laughs> she did not ask that. Yes. She did. She did ask that. No. She gives it a B. She absolutely did. If you can read it, oh, it gets too blurry anyway. But yeah, she she asked about if that. If she was playing them in order, I, I could see that. Yeah, because yeah, she started at the beginning of it and went forward. Oh, uh, okay, maybe she did. <laughs> you know, I I tried a little bit of it. I like the visual style, the polygon look um, on the N sixty four one. I downloaded that Xbox one, like the uh, whatever the reboot was. I don't know. It had it's, like some microtransactions just... or something. What is it? It's just called Killer Instinct. Yeah. Um, but like Alex, I just couldn't get a feel for it. Uh, I'm not comfortable uh, giving a rating, so I'll just concede the vote. Sounds like you agree. So to the B. Let, and, let and it you know what? In the, in, in the Xbox One game, you can play as General Ram from Gears 1 and the Arbiter from Halo. So that's pretty fucking cool. Nice. Doing the Bomberman treatment. Yeah. Two bees. No idea what we're talking about. No. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking, if you have, if life is a pinata, <laughs> so, <laughs> if you've been living as a pinata, you'll love this one. Viva pinata! <laughs> Alex. Oh, no. Okay. Am, am, am I the guy? Um. <laughs> Viva Pinata is an interesting game. I think it's it it does what it sets up to do very well, which is be a gardening game where you attract and cultivate and raise pinatas and stuff. Um, I can see this game being very popular nowadays, especially with the audience. But the problem is, is that I think it's on the wrong console. I don't, I don't think people are playing Viva Pinata or farming games and stuff on the Xbox. I think maybe if they did a port to Switch, this game would be uh be great this game would be great for i can't help playing stuff but as it stands i give it an a um she wrote had to pay for game didn't have money so (laughs) i don't i never played this one and uh i don't uh i don't have any experience so i would have to pass this one to you guys i opened it and i think i was immediately just like like, it, I was just overwhelmed. I was like, it was giving me tutorials and stuff. And I was like, you know what? You could just have the ranking, Alex. <laughs> Give it the A. 
<laughs> hey, I mean, honestly, out of the post um, Xbox stuff that they've made, Via Piñata, both those games are like the most like consistently good get things that they made. So, life is a piñata, and Rare uh, really <laughs> hit it out of the park. It's not uh, a segue, by the way. It's just me talking. When you when you destroy <laughs> when you bl- when you destroy a pinata, you got to grab all that candy. What happens when the candy grabs you? That's like being grabbed by ghoulies. Next up is grabbed by the ghoulies. <laughs> In Russia, ghoulie grab you. <laughs> <laughs> Does anybody else play this one? No. I have some notes. I go, I'll go. i let you go first. Long intro, too. But the storybook style was enjoyable to watch. Anne was able to click through um, the, the reading scenes. It was, she thought it was more engaging and quick. Once joystick situation figured out, I had to teach her about the right stick doing attacks. Uh, she, yeah. didn't, she was running backwards the whole time. That was funny. Uh, once joystick situation figured out, it was nice to handle. Fun karate kicking all the furniture. Saw a poster for Attic. What's the game? Attack. Attic something? Attic Attack. Attic. Attic Attack in Mansion. She liked that. She gets it a B. Yeah, I would give it a C. And my, my reasoning for that is that I think it's a, it's a fine game. I actually started playing this one for a game talk that I missed. Um... So that was fun. Uh, um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't mean to tell you switched over to CFDs, but I but I but I did play a little bit of this game, and you know I it was enjoyable, but it, it was also kind of monotonous because um, it, it was like you would enter a room and do a battle, and then you would walk through a scary hallway, which just requires you to like push buttons to keep your heart rate down, and then you have to do like another battle in another room and stuff, and. That's basically the game. Um, I did like the charm the game had, but like, I don't know if I see myself going back to this one. Weird control system on that. Yeah, very interesting strange. choice. I don't know what their idea was. I'm gonna reach over here real fast because my phone's going off, and I'm gonna turn my volume down. I'll be right back. Okay. <laughs> don't get grabbed by any ghoulies on your oh, expedition. I'm getting like 15 messages. Spencer, you're so do, gonna... are you are you good? Oh, go ahead. Are you good with the C? So? He he said C. I, I yes, don't get a vote. C. Yeah, but you're uh, not gonna good fight for your girlfriend's ranking. Fuck no! She don't know what she's talking about. Have you heard these things, dude? She knows what fucking attic attack is. It's because she played it and 20 saber minutes before wolf. <laughs> That's impressive. She's taking yes. note. She's taking good notes. I'm just saying. She took, yeah, I mean, she took, she's playing in order. She took some serious notes. I like, give her that. She like made connections. You know, like that's really <laughs> connections. Connect. Connect. Sports shins. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you ready for the next one, Alex? Yes. Speaking of connections, <laughs> sometimes when you're driving, you have to make connections to other. That's more of a flying thing. We're talking about blast core. I think you get a plane, right? A helicopter. <laughs> get a robot with a jetpack. <laughs> sometimes robots and jetpacks have to make connections. Let's talk about yeah. blast core. <laughs> I'm really connected to my N64 when I play this game. <laughs> With the controller connecting to the console. Teddy, you want to go first? Sure, I'd love to. So, I've owned this game for a long time on the N64, but never played it. Sad, because I tried it on the Rare Replay, and I was just super into it. I know uh, Derek really likes this game. Um, he's mentioned it before. Um, I think one of his favorite games on the console, and I can see why. It's basically a destruction derby where you get a number of vehicles to destroy... Uh, buildings, and then there's like some lady that comes on screen. What did she say, Alex? Time to get moving. <laughs> and then if you're like on a roll, she starts like her eyes bulge out, like she just had a fat orgasm or something. Um, oh, she... <laughs> a fat orgasm. A fat orgasm. Yeah. <laughs> a good one. Right? I just had this pH. Fat orgasm. It's a pH. <laughs> fat. It's cool. Uh, 
<laughs> I got really into this game, not because of the orgasm, because of the uh, destruction elements. It was just fun, like, crushing down these buildings. They had a real bop going on in the menu and some of the missions, like little briefings before you start the mission. They got a guy in a helicopter, like, patrolling over everything. There's kind of a rush factor. There's, like, a giant um, gas truck that's, like, a, um, aiming for the buildings that you're coming for, and you can't let them destroy the buildings because there's, like, not hostages, but, like, pedestrians inside. The goal is really to get them out by destroying the building. What logic it makes, I don't know, but uh, it's fun. It's good gameplay. <laughs> there's some replay. Uh, it starts on easy missions. Some really hard uh, controls. I think uh, there's, like, one vehicle where it's, like, you have to do spins and, like, twists and pivot into the buildings. I couldn't get the hang of that one, but I really did like some of the other ones, like the steam press one. Uh, I think just the standard, um, I don't even know what it is, like a tractor or something. That one's fun. Uh, when it's at its simplest, I think it's at its best. I would have liked to see the series keep going. It could have got a great 360 game. You know, this would have been a good Microsoft Rare era game, I think. Um, but for what it is, I think it's a gem. I'll give it an A. You know, you're right. I could see this being like a like a downloadable game. Yeah, they could do something fun with it, like giving like a reboot, you know? I think it will work a lot. Like racing games just generally are pretty like successful and fun to make. Like I, as far as I see. Yeah, I I'll go next. I I find this game to be very fun. It was actually the last N64 rare game I picked up for my collection, but I, I was surprised just by how much fun it is. I mean, just just like destroying shit every mission, basically. <laughs> uh, which who doesn't want to destroy shit? I mean, that's the that's why you play video games, right? <laughs> um, just so, you know, non nonsenseless destruction. Um, and I was having a ton of fun with this game. I will say it does get a little repetitive. That's my only complaint is that, um, I wish there was a bit of a better variety with the missions, but you do get a bunch of different vehicles to use though. Um, but most of the time it's, it's the same type of missions where you've got to destroy stuff or, 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 you know, clear a path for a bomb or this or that. Um, what, what did you give it, Teddy? I said an A. Yeah, I would say A as well. My notes here say it's like Crazy Taxi, arrow to guard you at bottom left corner. Green arrows pointing to the building you need to destroy. I, I think she meant guard you. <laughs> guide you. Yeah, her, it, it does say guide, but her handwriting is so weird. Uh, earn money for buildings and parts destroyed. Fun demolishing buildings with a smiley face at the end. She also gives it an A, so she's with you Ooh, guys. Ooh, A across the board. A. <laughs> it's blast corpse a eh? nice looking pretty healthy Man. so far it's hard to keep in your pants <laughs> speaking of which it's mr pants it's the next game i have nothing me neither yes. <laughs> oh, shut up. one word <laughs> what is oh, mr letter. pants <laughs> Mr. Paints is interesting because uh, it was a um, it was supposed to be Donkey Kong's Coconut Crackers. I talked about that uh, you know about that before on the show, um, and it got turned into Mr. Pants because they lost the Donkey Kong license when they got bought by Microsoft. Uh, Mr. Pants was a character from, from their website that they drew in thirty seconds, and he's awesome. Um, <laughs> the game's just like a fun little puzzle game. Um, it's like a grid based puzzle game and stuff where you drop shapes and stuff. Um, yeah, I give it a C. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> that's fair. Okay, man, C is a good rating, but you got to see this next game. It's called Jet Force Gemini from the N sixty four. Have you played this one, Spencer? Or is it notes? Again? Yes, I have personal personal history on this. Ooh, one. well then you go first. Well, it's not very interesting, but I played this as a kid. A friend got it to me f f for Christmas, and I adored it. Uh, I played it for a long time. Even played the multiplayer with some friends. Um, I, I did not play it recently, but I can only imagine this did not age well. I don't know yeah. if either of you guys have played it recently. <laughs> I would have to wager it's probably in the B category, but I'll hear your guys' thoughts. Okay, so when you say that, you mean the controls, because the controls are garbage on the n64 yeah. version um yeah if, you, if you're playing on the rare replay they do have options to kind of like change the controls and make it a little more bearable um mm -hmm. but honestly it's like what it's 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 one of those games to me is like if you can get used to the wonky ass controls even on the original version it's still fun like it's mm -hmm. still like a fun like sci-fi shooter game and stuff 
Um, and and I it, I it always makes me wonder. It, like this game's pretty cool, and it always makes me wonder why Star Fox Adventures didn't turn out better. Um, <laughs> because cl- clearly they could do something like this pretty well. Um, what did you give it? I gave it a B, but I'm willing to say if if it plays better now with the controls. I mean, if you think it's worth more, I'm I'm willing to. No, I that. don't. I don't think it's worth more. I'm trying to decide if I think it's a B or a C. I, think it's a B. I guess uh, I will help out here every time. Okay, so I'm blinded. I'm blound. Um, by my disgust for this game because I actually, you know what? I've always wanted to like Jet Force Gemini. I've always thought, oh, that's so cool. Rare made a, you know, a sci-fi spaceship thing. And then I played it on the 64. And then when you play it on the 64, I don't know. I'm, I'm always fine with 64 controls, but it's the progression that was like, I felt like I was in this damn blocky looking room for 30 minutes and I couldn't figure out like, what am I, is there a door I'm missing? Is there something I'm missing? And it, it just like, I was so frustrated about the fact that I thought this was going to be like a fun mission kind of run and gun, you know, FPS or TPS style game. And I just didn't get that vibe. So my gut goes C, but I would think it would probably, I could probably deal with it better on rare replay. So I'm also in the middle BC, but Spencer's at A, B and Alex is I'm, at I'm not at A. Yeah, I would, I'm good with B. Alex? It's it's more interesting than Mr. Pants and Grab of the Ghoulies. Yeah. Okay. Good metric. For interesting factor alone, we bump it up to B. I'm good with that. <laughs> Speaking of bumping up sci fi. Oh. Bumping up <laughs> sci fi. Jetpack. My life. <laughs> My life. That's, that's the tone you did it in. My life. <laughs> Jetpack was the original uh, franchise created um, by Ultimate Play the Game. And uh, there have been, I think, four, if I was kind of correctly, titles. There's been Jetpack, uh, Lunar Lander, or whatever it was called. Lunar something. Uh, what was it? Hold on. What was it called? My page will load. Uh, Lunar a, Jetman. There's a solar Jet, thing Jetpack, too. Lunar... Yeah, there was je, uh, Jetpack, Lunar Jetman, Solar Jetman, and uh, Jetpack Refueled. Um, and they're all sort of like arcadey space games. Um, the the Jetman games, you're you can get out of your like little ships and do stuff that way. But I'm I've really only focused on the Jetpack games, which are more arcadey. And uh, you know, even I played the uh, ZX Spectrum one earlier today just to get another feel for it. And I've I've put a little bit of time in the refueled. Even those, I think, are pretty fun. Like 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 even the original version is, is a is a pretty fun high score based game uh, even if it you know <laughs> it's from the zx spectrum so it looks kind of like ass but um fun it's, it's a pretty fun game um i'm having a tough time r- r- ranking it though because how do i rank an arcade game next to a, like fucking like conquer's bad fur day and stuff like it's <laughs> it's a, a conundrum i think i put it there though because I think that the the formula is really good. Like this is a great start mm-hmm. for rare. It may not be their kind of charismatic rare that we kind of know and remember, the iconic rare, but as far as like origin stories go, like this is good. You know, and I found that on the rare replay, it's actually kind of just fun to go back to try and see how many of the 16 levels you can get through the building, the ship, like there's like diff- there's a variety of different kind of like, you know, alien extraterrestrial creatures that come on each stage um unique gameplay challenges the refueled game is really good the other ones are okay Mm -hmm. the ones in the middle i'm not as crazy about so but i I also don't think it's like the most personable you know i think we'll get some when we get some um i go b personally my girlfriend wrote a friggin essay on this, but uh, I'll just read that. <laughs> no, no, I want to hear this essay. <laughs> no, you do not, because some of it. Oh. When she first did this, some of it she was literally just writing what like the the thing in the rare oh. replay says about the game, because she thought I needed that. But uh, she, but basically her notes say once you figured out controls, it's fun. She wrote like asteroids. Yeah. Uh, she gives it I a B. Oh, okay, B across the board. Then I I say B too. R2, B2. Bingo! Wait, there's no R in bingo. Shit. Bringo. 
Bringo. Br Bringo Star. <laughs> you know, Bringo Star just just had his birthday yesterday. Happy birthday. Is he alive? Birthday, Bringo Star. Bringo. Bringo Star. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, he's alive. Okay. What's next? <laughs> Start keeping track of all those. Uh, you know, there's a lot of. Speaking of stars. <laughs> there's a lot of elements that go into rare games that make them great. True. None so much as cameo, elements of power. That's oh. what this game's called? They're going to say, not this one. <laughs> oh. I was trying to be nice. Uh, I'll, I'll <laughs> take it away. introduce it. Cameo is kind of like the big new rare game for the Xbox. I think it was their first really like major, I guess if you're not counting like Star Fox Adventures, um, kind of adventure back into the foray of that kind of like, it's not platforming, it's an action game. I think it like screams like, I want to have personality. Like, you know, the main character cameo, I think her sister and her family it's like she's in a fairy kingdom or queendom or something and they're all locked up by the evil sister who's brought magic back it's kind of like a, it's actually a very i wouldn't say it's very impressive visually but it looks good you know it seems like it has a decent budget as far as um you know like with the environments and everything go um i think it's just lackluster you know there's like interesting concepts like cameo can turn into three different creatures like a icicle hurling troll or like a, a vine creature or an armadillo by pressing any of the three buttons on the uh, xbox controller x or a x b y uh, a is just for jumping and then like they each have their own unique attacks and you start out with all of them and then you lose all of them of course and then you work to get them back i think it just feels so plain and so dull that it kind of just feels like a massive failure coming off of 64 era rare and i you know it was one of two xbox 360 games i owned when i had my 360 and i remember putting a decent bit of time into it but never finishing it i want to like it more than i do but i don't think it's worth liking more than i have i think i'm at a c yeah, this game went through some development hell. It was originally for the original Xbox um, and got moved over to 360 when that stuff was happening and then got kind of rushed out the door. Um, I agree. I haven't played it as much as Teddy, but I agree that it does feel a little plain. Um, I think it is a little uninspired, but I don't think it, I would call it bad, though. Um, I think it's if you're looking for like this type of adventure game, especially at the time, which you know those weren't that common, especially on like the 360. Um, I think it's still serviceable for for what it was trying to do. Um, yeah, see, I thought you were gonna go higher than his score. Nah, I can't put it next to like Conquer or Jet Force. Like those the, the, those have distinct personality. Of, you know, like I could talk about those games longer than I could cameo. I. Yeah, I'm with you guys. I played a little bit of this one um, at a friend's house because they got the 360 at launch. And they had two games. They had Cameo and they had uh, the racing game. Was it Forza by then or was it a, diff was it a different one that came out? It was Forza. Okay. They, they, they had those. Now, I don't like racing games. Never have. Uh, it's definitely not my, my thing. And we switched from playing this game to Forza. So if that tells you anything, we were just not into this game. Uh, I give it a C as well. I don't think it was pretty. It was decent looking at the time. And uh, it's not a bad game, like Alex was saying. It's just considering, like, especially if you play Don like Banjo-Kazooie, <laughs> you're just like, oh, no, this doesn't even. I think there. Cameo is a game trying to replicate a rare game. Hmm. Without any of the freaking fun, you know? They're like, <laughs> this is by definition what a rare game is. Yeah. Which is, it's just so un, un, like uninspired. That's that's a Microsoft rare game is what it yeah, is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Speaking of racing games, Spencer. Yeah, we have Mickey's Speedway. Captures all the Disney magic and all the speed that you've ever wanted. <laughs> Mickey's Speedway USA. Get it today. Uh... You actually should. This game's fucking awesome. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> a, I mean, it's the Diddy Kong Racing, guys. Come on. This game's fucking awesome. <laughs> uh, um, I don't think it's as good as Diddy Kong Racing. I will say that. But Diddy Kong Racing is really fun. Um, but I think with the Disney license, like this is above like any other licensed Disney or whatever car racing game you're going to find. Um, and... <laughs> 
It's I mean it, it's 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 ton of fun. <laughs> That's a There's very a ton specific of... specific I narrow genre. Resources. You just no, you said... a bunch of them. There's a bunch of them. <laughs> Yeah, give them like five right now. <laughs> but um, no, this is like a childhood uh, classic of mine. And I actually, for some reason, I have the Japanese version now, um, <laughs> which <laughs> is so funny because it's Mickey Speedway USA. <laughs> yeah. And and when I was recollecting all the rare stuff, Damon found me the Japanese copy locally and gave it to me. Um, so now I can play it in Japanese. But it doesn't matter because um, I always play as Goofy. And when you pass somebody, he goes, Look at me, and, uh, <laughs> and I hear that I don't know how many times per race, and it always look cracks me, me look up. Me, look at me, look at me. Um, I gotta give it a day, man. It's 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 a good car racer. Teddy, you got any sway on this one? No, I probably should since it's on the N sixty four. But maybe someday I'll uh, concede my vote. Okay. I wish I could combat you on that, Alex. But, but in Vicky's feet, I mean, it's a it's a good car racer. <laughs> it's a ton of fun. Uh oh. Speaking of good car racers. Speaking of greatness. Speaking of cars. It's the banjo series. <laughs> this is all the banjos, which Rare had parts in. Banjo experts, what what games are included in this package? We got banjo. Kazooie. <laughs> Banjo Katua. <laughs> Maybe I I I Banjo Grunty goes to the Orthodontist. Uh Banjo Pilot and everybody's favorite Banjo Nuts and Butts. Banjo and Smash How the hell Brothers. We gonna do this one? Banjo and Smash Brothers. How the hell are we gonna do this one? <laughs> Let's uh... give it to Spencer first. Let's see what he says. I don't see how you put it anything other than an S ranking. It defines the company. It's um, probably the best platformer on the N64. Has the most charm mixed with really solid gameplay. Memorable characters somehow, despite being you know pretty simple. The, you know you don't forget these characters. Uh, if you if you're gonna say like give me the perfect N64, maybe even game. You might go Banjo Kazooie, not even just platformer. So I give it an S. I think that's the argument for S, right? The first two games on S G four are like damn near like perfect for their genre, mm -hmm. and then the other three games in the series are flawed. I don't think I won't say they're awful, but they're flawed games. But even then, I don't think that's enough to put a chink in those first two games' armor. Like that, yeah, S rank. It's a triple S, boys. I just uh, like come on, it's freaking banjo. Cause, like banjo Tui is one of my favorites. You know, I like. I mean, if it was just Tui, okay, I could probably be like, yeah, the series, whatever. We, we can we can critique it, but you know, I think that Kazooie and Tui just scream awesomeness. Best platformers on the system in general. Best three D platformers. Best, best platformer, yeah. I see. I don't know if they've been topped that like often. Like I can only think of a few games that I would put up there with them. Nuts and Bolts is interesting in its own right. It's not that heinous, as I used to say. Pilot's a joke, but, I mean, it's funny. Um, <laughs> Grunty's Revenge, people like it. I mean, I, I tried it on my Game Boy Advance, but I think I needed the select button, which wasn't working. Um, so, yeah, no, I'm happy to throw it in the S. Our first rare S. That's a rare sight. Woo! Not our last. <laughs> Go, Banjo. Big, big competition coming up, though. They're known for basically two series, Banjo-Kazooie. And then the other one is right after it, Donkey Kong Country. RC Pro. Oh, sorry. Be careful, though, because Donkey we're talking about Donkey Kong under Rare, which includes um, also Diddy Kong Racing and Donkey Kong 64. There Man. you go. Did I miss um, any? I can, I can start. I would, I would give this another S uh, for a couple of reasons. For one, it, it is basically also the platformer for Super Nintendo. I think, I mean, people go Mario, Super Mario World, but I honestly like this more than Super Mario World. Um, they took an existing property that Nintendo had and somehow made it more memorable. Like when people think of Donkey Kong, they think of this Donkey Kong. They don't even think of the original one. People often are like, oh yeah, there was a Donkey Kong before this. That's kind of hard to even remember it. Um, and Nintendo clearly understands that because they still make these games with that style of Donkey Kong today. So... 
to me, very iconic. They made Donkey Kong, which is one of the most popular franchises of all time. So I give it an S ranking. And Country is my favorite game of all time. <laughs> uh, so I can't say anything but S. I will argue, though, that uh, I don't like 64. Um, but I know there's people out there that do. So, you know, maybe it's just not my cup of tea. But I think it's still a, it's still a competently made game, I would say. But um, no S, definitely. I mean, Donkey Kong Country the the just just those first two country games are fucking phenomenal again the some of the best in their genre i don't know if there's been games of that, that have really topped them or come close i mean let's face it it's a triple s syndrome you know we're going banjo donkey donkey the donkey okay. that started it all <laughs> Country was not only like genre defining, but console defining. I think they showed up Nintendo on their own hardware with one of their own IPs. That's incredible. Um, you know, to think that a British company did it, you know, and at the time in the what, early nineties, uh, it's a legacy title. The first two are like really good. I'm interested to play the third one or try it again. Um, and then I mean, it did give birth to the other country games, which I know a lot of people like. Um, returns and tropical freeze is like a, a insta hit with most people uh mm-hmm. 64 is weird but it's you know a sign of the times i think it's just cool that like you could play as donkey in 3d and four of the other kongs in 3d donkey did die uh <laughs> dick sigh uh funky no not funky you can play as a uh, lanky and what's lanky. Chunky? yeah it, it wasn't dixie though it was tiny oh tiny Tiny Kong. Uh, yeah, no, I I respect it. Yes. Hey, there go. It goes from a game that you respect to a game that makes you respect it by beating your ass. <laughs> you get talk about battle toads. Yeah, <laughs> you're gonna like it. Now, Battle Toads is interesting because there's actually more Battle Toads stuff than what's like on available on like the Rare Replay and on xbox in general because uh, they had like a double dragon cr- crossover and they had like a battle toads and battle maniacs on like genesis and stuff um but my experience is mainly going to be like the, the the nes game the arcade game and the reboot game and i think they're very fun beat-em-ups um the the nes one is incredibly hard um, it's, it's just one of those NES games that fucking d- demolishes you, and you know, <laughs> it's I, that can be a little disheartening. Um, but th- I think the arcade game is much better, honestly, and it's a, it, that one's so much fun to play with somebody else. And the Xbox one was was pretty cool when I played it for Game Talk and stuff. Um, I'd give Battletoads an A. I think it's a it's a cool beat 'em up franchise that also is like a symbol of like the like eighties culture. Some notes here. Powerful punches. Big jumps. Can use broken items to hit with. A lot of exclamations, by the way. Dodge items, pick up rocks, and throw at the screen. The TV facing the TV screen facing you. Cool element. She gives it an A. I uh, actually rented this on the Super Nintendo when I was a kid. Uh, the, the obviously the version that was out for that, and it was too hard for me to get past even the second level. So I'm a little bitter at it about it, but I don't uh, I don't hold it against it. It's just it's just a hard game. I wasn't up to it, so uh, I, I'm cool with A as she gave it. I've been dabbling with it on the rare replay. I agree with Alex. The arcade one is kind of just leaps and bounds more impressive. I think it's got a lot of those visual elements that are really cool, but. The other one, the earlier one, is actually really cool, too. I like that it's gotten love recently in the reboot. Um, I kind of wish I had someone to play it with. You know, multiplayer, I think that would make it more fun. Um, I'm okay. I'm cool with the A ranking. I don't know if I've gotten – if I'm not – I'm not the Battletoads guy, but, you know, I, I can see why it would get an A. Oh, man. Rare's doing pretty well. They're very bright. They're shining bright like a star, which is a, a counter to the next game we're going to be talking oh about. Gosh. Perfect just get, Dark. Just hurry up, Spencer. Jesus Christ. And Goldeneye. <laughs> we're consolidating them. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, gold, gold eye counts. You have That's to segue to golden eye as well. So bright and and gold. Okay. You guys want to go first? This one. This one. I'm expecting an average on <laughs> this one because I think people are gonna have some dissenting opinions. Um, yeah, I I adored Perfect Dark as a kid. Like, I didn't love Goldeneye just because I never had it. But Perfect Dark was everything Goldeneye was, but better to me. And it had co-op, so you could play it with a friend, which was just a freaking blast. Um, the multiplayer was unbelievable. You could play with bots, so you know if you didn't have any friends, you just play with the bots. Uh, there's so much good stuff about Perfect Dark. I'm obviously talking about the N64 one. I have almost no experience, actually no experience with 361. Um, so whatever that thing is. The only reason that I don't strive to give this an S is I can only imagine the controls are dog shit now. And what I think when I think of an S series game, I think of a game that transcends time. And I do not think these games probably transcended the N64 era. No, if you're playing it on uh, yeah, you could play it on, game on, on 360, though. Yeah, yeah. You could do that, and maybe it's fine. I didn't do that. So it it I, is. It, it plays I can't like a normal shooter. I think it but I will give it an A. I will give it an A. I'm not as big into Perfect Dark, but I, I owned and played a lot of GoldenEye. It's funny, in our first episode on the mappers, you know, Alex and I are going back and forth. I'm dissing GoldenEye. Don't diss GoldenEye. Uh, well, I did. Um, you know what? I can respect it and I can appreciate it. I think it's honestly what pulls up the ranking for me because I didn't care that much about Perfect Dark. I've tried many times to just play sing- Perfect Dark single player, um, and I don't it's just it's never clicked. But I've I have nostalgic memories about GoldenEye Couch Co op or not Couch Co op Couch Versus, and um, the missions are fun. The cheats are awesome. Like it's just we're kind of missing that era. I, I don't give it an S. I don't think it's perfect, but I I respect it for what it is. In having an N64, that's like one of those must-have games. I- I'm happy to give it an A. I do give it an S. <laughs> uh, because Goldeneye and Perfect Dark to me, well, yes, they have aged poorly. Um, but I think that it's very important to look at those games because they have paved the way for what console shooters would become. Um, and they were early examples of it done very, very well. And uh, if you're playing per- uh, Perfect Dark on 360, um, you can play with modern controls. There's also a 360 version of GoldenEye, not actually on the Xbox, but uh, they were working on it. It didn't get completed, and it got leaked online. So you can download that and play it, and it plays perfectly fine. Um, the only thing that would possibly drag it down is Perfect Dark Zero. Um, it is a very average, probably below average game that is, has, is a mess, but... That game feels like an N64 shooter, which it shouldn't because it's on the 360. Uh, um, um, but the, man, the, those first two games, I think, are so important. And Perfect Dark, that that game is like, f- for me, is near perfect for the time it was released. Um, so I would have to say yes, but if you guys say A, we're going to have to bring it down. <laughs> oh, I'm man. Budging, so. Budging. <laughs> I can't budge personally because like I, neither one has clicked as much with me as they have with you. Yeah, no, I I understand. Yeah. Oh man, so many good memories playing Perfect Dark. God damn. Um, we're gonna get yelled at if I don't pick S, like by the viewers, huh? <laughs> You're yelling at me. <laughs> 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 you're gonna get yelled at by me if you switch. <laughs> Did you get yelled at I tonight, got... Spence? <laughs> I'm gonna say A. Ah, uh, okay. <laughs> I wasn't really gonna yell. At you. It's teetering, man. I don't. I can see it, but oh, can't quite do it. And then Perfect Dark Zero exists. Perfect Dark Zero <laughs> kind of weighs it down a little bit, but. Just, I could, just, just, uh, just shove that one away. Just, just, just don't. Just, yeah, <laughs> it's cool. You know what we might agree on is RC Pro Am. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, Cobra Triangle. I want to put Cobra Triangle in here because that game's cool too. Okay, it's, it's the same type of game basically. It's like isometric. 
Spencer, I want to hear what what uh, your girlfriend has to say about Arxy Pro on before we say our, our ditties. Well, I swear I thought she played this. Oh, here it is. Here we go. Here we go. Um, race trucks to be first. I guess that's the point of racing. That's what a race is, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to be first. Popping wheelies everywhere. Boosters on track. Obstacles on track. Every time you win, your truck gets upgrades. And the track's larger. More laps and gain level. Fun. She gives it an A. Fun. Wow. <laughs> I like fun. Fun. <laughs> Fun's fun. <laughs> Racing trucks. I. She must have played the second one. I played a lot of the first one, and it's not good. It's a mess. Uh, I mean, it's like hectic, frantic fun, but like, and I did play a lot of it, but there's no. Like, it's really difficult to master the track, not bump into the other cars. Uh, you can get, like, invincibility pickups. The speed things are, like, they just spring you along, but, like, they're hard to manage. Um, I And you have to take third or higher in a race of four every time. You can't take last, and the AI is pretty damn good. Um, and it is kind of, like, isometric in how it looks. So, like, it's not great. The second one is a little more interesting, but I didn't care that much to try more of it. I'd go see. I just don't think it's a great representation of racing or rare. I think it's 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 interesting because you you kind of, it's it's hard for us to like go back and look at it because it's such a a different like style of racing game that isn't done now like the like isometric style um, that was you know there was a few games back in the day that like did this. I I recently played another one that did it on um, the Blizzard arcade thing. Uh, they had rock and roll racing. Um, which I actually enjoyed quite a bit playing it on there. Uh, but R- R- RC Pro Am, um, I just, I don't know if I like the isometric style for racing games. Um, if we're putting Cobra Triangle, I like that game more because it's not really a racing game. It's like an objective based mission game. Um, but I would have to put it at a... B. Really? Well, so it that's... goes next to Conquer. I think it's better than Cameo. <laughs> I could probably play it more than Cameo. But hold on, wait. What was what it was yours, Spencer? Mine was an A, and his was a C. I have a B, so we have to. No, it evens out. Okay. For re- for reference, uh, she did play Cobra Triangle, and she gave it a B. Gave it a worse. Okay. She thought it was worse than Pro Am. Oh, I thought it was better because I had like it was like your boat and you have like missions like, uh, like shoot these enemies and like protect these mines. Oh, and, Cobra uh, Triangle's interesting. Stage five is hard though. Like you got to protect the kids in the swimming pool. I actually I like the variety. You know what? Cobra Triangle is more interesting than the RC Pro Am games. So oh, yeah, that's definitely. That, up, that's why I, put I can it, agree with. That's that. why I put it at B. Yeah, yeah. that's why I put it at yeah. B because I, I, I lump those games together. I'm still C, but I can see why it's a B. <laughs> <laughs> if it was separate, I would put Arsene Pro on C and put Cobra Triangle on D. Okay. I have no idea how to segue into this, so the next one is Saber Wolf. You didn't even try! <laughs> Go ahead, Alex. Give me one. Well, if you're hungry, it's time to wolf down the next game. <laughs> it's Saber Wolf. That oh, wasn't no. terrible. That was a B. That wasn't yeah, bad. That was good. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, put my uh, segue on there. <laughs> Wolf B. down B. <laughs> um, um, this is another series that was on the ZX Spectrum um, and also one game on Game Boy Advance. The ZX Spectrum games are Saber Wolf, Underworld, and Night Lore, I believe. And then the Game Boy Advance one was Saber Wolf. And then there was a canceled Xbox game that never came out. It was also Saber Wolf, but it didn't happen. Or Saber Man or something. Um no (laughs) these games i think are respectable for their time but uh, jesus fucking (laughs) christ i'm not playing them (laughs) um i don't you know i don't know about the gba one that that could be cool but the zx spectrum games i think especially the ones that are like isometric i don't know they're just so like 
past their time now that I do. And I have a hard time going back to it again, and like even trying to put myself in that mindset. Like Jetpack was fun because it's more high score based. I just, I just could not get into these that much. I I have to think about my ranking for a minute. All right. Well, maybe my girlfriend's notes will help you. Uh, you walk around just holding. Oh no no. Little sword does not help protect you, and this is in all caps, unless <laughs> you walk around just holding X or B towards enemies. Have to be facing them directly or you die. Very particular. Maze was easier and more fun to follow than attic attack. She gives it a B. What? B? Um, wow. I really respect how much she tried to play this game. <laughs> because I took one, I took one stab at it. I was like, "This is unplayable. This is be- like this belongs in the past." Like I understand it can respect the legacy and the cameos and the other games, but goddamn, you know the one game that I thought I liked, Gunfright, because as a lookalike Saber Wolf, Saberman, it's not even in the Saberman series. Every one mm. of these plays like ass. Fucking underworld I... is like you jump on a block to hop on a block that's going over spikes and back and down and you can't even hop on the damn block and you turn into like a wolf and like you suddenly lose your ability you know i mean interesting i think it sold well from what i was reading but games trash d you know i like the art style for that one but i don't like isometric games (laughs) um yeah and that's a yeah, it ba- sucks. And, you know, isometric it's games so... are bad. That's a bad isometric game. <laughs> it's so hard to put. It's so hard to put this in D though. I Why? I have to agree. I have to agree D because I, it just feels like I don't know. It feels like disrespectful to me because it is such a big part of their legacy. But yeah, D. They they, they just don't hold up. I it's, with love and respect, I give it a D. They could have done better. Like it's just it's or or they did fine for the time, but it is it is not playable by today's standards. Yeah, I if you got the replay, girlfriend. If you, know if you get the rare replay, to, and, to be fair, oh go ahead. I would say if you had the rare replay and you want to play some of the ZX Spectrum stuff, play Jetman or uh, Lunar or just sorry Jetpack or uh, Lunar Jetman or Gunfright. But those games just. Yeah, I mean, Spence, you can look at it for a minute, but I, I wouldn't. Re- I really wish it. you played it, Spence. I would have loved to hear your thoughts on it. <laughs> no, no, I'm super glad I didn't. The, to be to be fair, uh, I heard her playing this from the other room, <laughs> and I'm pretty sure she was swearing the whole time, like yelling at the screen. <laughs> so I don't know where the B came from. It looks like she oh. wrote a C, actually, but she tried to fix it and, and do a B. She's using pen. B, swearing like a sailor. Oh! Yeah. I did it. You'd have to if we're playing Sea of Thieves. It's funny we didn't give the last one a C. Because we're now looking at the Sea of Thieves. Ready to fight, Spencer? <laughs> oh, jeez. Are we doing this? Let's Wait, who should go first? I think because Alex didn't get to speak about this on the Game Talk, he should go first. Ooh, okay. okay. Um, so, hi, my name's Alex. Um, I played Sea of Thieves recently with Teddy. And uh, we asked us to do it on the Game Talk. That's I didn't me. get to. Uh, Teddy did a good job representing our time playing the game, um, and we've played it some after. Actually, the other day we we linked up and played a little bit of Sea of Thieves uh, just for the fuck of it, and uh, had some fun. Um, you know, I think Sea of Thieves is commendable based on <laughs> based on what came before it, which was a bunch of misfires from Rare. Um, basically, ever since Microsoft bought them, they've you know, with a few exceptions, most of the games have been average or below average. Um, and I think Sea of Thieves is a return to form for them. Um, and actually, as, as far as I know, it did pretty well. And I think that's also commendable that they were able to tap into a, this audience. Um, and from what me and Teddy had played, I had fun. Um, it's a game that I would definitely want somebody else to play with. Uh, playing it by myself, maybe not so much. But I think as a multiplayer game, it is a lot of fun. And uh I would put A. I liked it. Oh, you want me to go next? 
<laughs> yeah. Literally sitting in silence. And you told him to shut up. <laughs> was my, was my I, piercing I, stare I, loud I could, enough? I, yeah, I could read your piercing <laughs> stare because I know we're going to fight on this one. The only reason I don't give this a D is because of, I like the concept. The, the concept is smart. A multiplayer pirate game. Seems like it should have been done before. It actually probably has... Um, and I just haven't played those games, but I, I'm pretty sure there's a couple games on Steam that do this. Um, uh, this game is so empty. I'm going to say some stuff that, that I said in the game talk. I think it lacks progression. It lacks a purpose. It's really fun for like an hour, at least in my experience. And then it very quickly, you're like, this is it. And then I just completely lost interest in it um so i will give it a fittingly a c do you just uh, just curious though because like that's why that's kind of why i like it is kind of like the openness and kind of like the it doesn't really like it doesn't like hold your hand it isn't like go here and you'll get this much xp and this this new thing it's like it just tells you like here's your objective you know go find this gold or go to this guy's tomb or find these things and then it's like okay bye and then you and your friend just have to sell out in the open sea that that's kind of why i like it because that's just, why i don't like, like it yeah <laughs> i i don't i don't i i'm fine with that like i like games that don't necessarily hold your hand but i also like them to have a purpose and to have some reason to do something and to be like to have something to strive for and i just found nothing in this game and I understand why it's that way, because they have to have a persistent world that people can jump into and out of, and so they can't really have progression. But I just, bleh. Ted, I. So I have an interesting perspective in that I just came off of reviewing it, and we had a session where we played it for like four hours doing one quest. I can't think of many games where I've actually sat down and like really tried to figure out like a quest. It's one of those games that's like innately rewarding when you figure out what you're supposed to be thinking about. You're looking at a book. You can show the other person the book. And it's got like the treasure clues. It's like I sailed past half past Crescent Moon Isle. And then the sharks, they were chasing me. And we dropped the treasure down 40 paces below. You know, and then it's like, oh, well, maybe I'm going to look on the map and try and pinpoint this location. And so when you figure out like all those progressions and like those steps that you're like, you should be following to try and get the things and then you actually do it, it's really cool. When it doesn't work, it kind of sucks. You know, like we were sitting there trying to figure out what to do on this one damn island forever. It's like, oh, you know, place the thing <laughs> below. Who the fuck would have thought to dig below like a fucking, you know, tiki mask on the, on the top of the island or whatever. So I don't know. There are things I really like about it. I don't think I played a co-op game that was as meaningful and as fun and as interesting. I think like even just the sailing aspect, like if you compare it to Wind Waker, Wind Waker is cool. Okay, you're sailing at the sea, but really it would be great to do with a buddy, you know, have somebody on the ship with you and like do all that. Also in Wind Waker, you're not really diving. You're not like there's one point where you, okay, you see like, I, I guess I won't spoil Wind Waker for people who haven't played it, but uh, you know, there's a significant underwater segment, but it's really not for most of the sailing experience. For this, there is that underwater aspect. And I mean, like, you know, if you go underwater, there's really nothing there. It's rarely even fish, but the act of like making it an ocean actually makes you feel like you're out at sea. I remember comparing it to Titanic when we were doing it. So I think for the novelty and for the fun and for the general like kind of interest of like the quest and like the, the clues and following the clues and even some of the customization aspects, um, I bump it up. And then for a couple of things, I bump it down. But overall, I think as far as a modern rare game, it's a, it's a glimmer of hope in a sea of uh, dead, you know, so uh, I give it a. How do you want to solve this, boys? Well, we, we, we both said A. <laughs> yeah, we got two A's and a C. It's not an S. I can agree there. It's not... Can we agree on a B? Fine. <laughs> Put it in B. For me. I'm cool with whatever. 
Listen, I don't next know if it's we, on Viva Pinata status, but <laughs> speaking of C, next up we have a game that goes in the C category. If I ever fucking saw him one, it's Nick Riddle and Roll. <laughs> it only gets bumped up because Brian likes it. <laughs> okay, did you guys play this? Yes, I like it, but God, is it unplayable at points? Um, I think it, I think it'd be more fun to play with somebody else. Um, you. It's an isometric game where you play snakes and you gotta eat things and get to the end of the stage and get a certain amount of pellets and stuff. Um, I I think it's cool for what it, it, it's doing. It, it, it is very different on the NES. But no, it's, it sucks. Like, the, the controls <laughs> suck. <laughs> suck. <laughs> See? <laughs> My girlfriend just basically described the game, but it's a, it's a C for her. It's bad. You know, I'm sorry, Brian. Like, I want to like it, but they need to fix the controls. When you push up, you go this way. When you push right, or I'm sorry, when you go this, when you push this way, you go this way. So it's like, it's not right. It's not right. I played better isometrics. Like, Sonic 3D Blast plays way better than this, you know? Um, I respect it. It's cool. It's got a cool concept, but the controls screw the whole thing up. So I'm sorry, Brian. Not sorry. C. It's unanimous. Yeah, it's, what saves it from D is that it's more playable than the Saber Man games or, or you know, the, the Saber Wolf games. <laughs> it's true. We <laughs> may we may have a perfectly symmetric I, I saw it. Here. I saw it coming. Yeah, it's we got like a fucking middle finger middle up finger. or something. <laughs> <laughs> but I I have no say, but I'm looking at the title and I'm like, well maybe Maybe we should just screw it up. <laughs> Have a long pinky or something, or a longer middle finger. <laughs> uh, you guys can do this one because I don't know anything about it besides some of the history. It's Star Fox Adventures. Rounds out our rare here. <laughs> <Yes. laughs> <laughs> Dinosaur Planet. I'm, I'm right there with you, buddy. Oh, I don't like this game. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sure it's a fine game. I'm sure there's people that have sat down and played through this game and been like, yeah, this was a ton of fun. I'm going to play through this like once a year. I play 15 minutes of this game and then I am like, why am I even, what am I even doing? <laughs> and I find something else to do. Um, I've never once in my life wanted to complete this game. Uh, every time I've tried to play it, it's always been a situation. It just feels so uninspired. Because it it is a Star Fox game that also isn't a Star Fox game. Um, I'm sure if the game came out as Dinosaur Planet and had a little more of the rare flavor, it would have been a cooler game. But as it stands, they just took Star Fox and they were like, what if we did a Zelda? Can I, then, can I counter no. you, Alex? No! <laughs> can, I, can I just throw something out there? What? Okay. Is... Is part of the reason you don't like this game because you know that it's like a fake Star Fox game? Yes. Like the behind the scenes. That's stuff? exactly why I know. That's exact. It just feels so like disingenuous. Well, because because you like banjo nuts and bolts, right? Yeah. And that's clearly a different thing. So what if what if banjo nuts? What if you were told that banjo nuts and bolts? Was actually like a different franchise. Okay, Do whatever. You hear my okay, okay. You're you're making a good point, but let me counter that. Okay, this game is like bad Ocarina of Time, and I don't I don't really like Ocarina of Time as it is. Okay, so you don't you don't like the game that exactly. It no, exactly. No, I mean I can judge. I've tried to judge it. I've tried to play it many times. So okay. that like I'm not just judging it because like oh stinky Star Fox doesn't have ships and stuff. <laughs> um, I'm just saying, like, it feels so disingenuous, and like, it, when I'm playing it, I'm just like, yeah, I'm, I'm bored. <laughs> I don't want to play. That. Okay, so you you just don't even like the game. Oh, I do not like the game. Okay. D. I guess you made that clear when you said at the beginning, I don't like this game. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> no, I've I'm pretty open minded when it comes to like games and things, trying new new stuff. So I'll give anything a chance. What's your letter? D. What was it? D. <laughs> C. 
say it again. We're not done yet, though. Teddy, what? <laughs> okay. So, meningococcal meningitis won't wait, and neither will Starbucks Adventure. Stop playing with it, Spencer. Um, it's distracting me. Uh, oh, fuck. I can't put it down. I um, stopped my narrative analysis at, for the Star Fox series at Star Fox Adventures. I don't want to play it. I really – like, I played it. I've played it many times. Not many times. Twice, actually. And, like, stopped because it sucks. It's not good. It's not – like, you. I think I, at one point when you're on the dinosaur planet, it's like Star Fox with lightsabers. It's just, it's just weird. It's not good. You know, Assault is better. I can't give it the redeeming qualities because Assault is on the same platform. So you're already getting good Star Fox. Even freaking Starlink was, you know – as to, even if it's Star Fox is a cameo, like that's a decent game. Star Fox Adventures is not decent. It's sad. It's just a sad sight for Star Fox fans. As much as I know you want that symmetry, I'm going D, Spence. Wow. We're not adventure how, fans. <laughs> how far the Star Fox has fallen. You really star fucked it up this time. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, boy. Well, there we have it. We've ranked 20 series from Rare. What does this image mean to you guys? It solidifies what I already do. <laughs> Donkey Kong and Banjo are the fucking best. <laughs> yeah. I, you know, and... and on a different day, maybe uh, Perfect Dark would be up there with Goldeneye. Um, that you could, I could easily see other people ranking that up there, and I wouldn't disagree. Rare's had some highs and lows. Um, I think you know we. I think one of our game talk questions is like, is Rare or from last time was like, is Rare an average company or something? And I think it kind of, like, it kind of is, kind of isn't. I mean, that just because something's in B doesn't mean it's bad. Like, Conker's Bad Fur Day is, like, kind of iconic in a way. Um, I think once you start seeing this, the lower tier stuff, it's, like, not great. Um, but I think they're unforgettable for the right reasons, For you know. And some of the other stuff we just choose to ignore or leave in the past. Uh, yeah, it's you know, interesting. We, we, we... Go. Sorry. Not much more to say. Just talking. I was just thinking out loud. I was going to say we've we've never actually like established how we view the S through D. Because like in my eyes, it's like S is like damn near perfect. And then A is like very good. B is good. C is like fine. And then D is just no, I don't want to play it. Yeah, it's like a rare steak, you know, or well done yeah. with well done being at the top. Banjo Kazooie is pretty well done. Same with country. Spencer, you want to do the recap? Yeah, yeah, we have in the S ranking we have Banjo Kazooie and the Donkey Kongs by Rare. And then in A ranking we have Viva Pinata, Blast Core, Mickey's Speedway, Battle Toads, and Perfect Dark slash Goldeneye. In our B column we have Conquer. Killer Instinct, Jet Force Gemini, Jetpack, Pro Am, and Sea of Thieves. In our C ranking, we have Grabbed by the Ghoulies, It's Mr. Pants, Cameo, and Snake Rattle and Roll. And at the bottom, dredging up the D's, we've got Connect Sports, Saber Wolf, and Star Fox Adventures. Is this the most D's we've had? I think so. I'm not oh, sure. Yeah, I'm not sure how many we had on advance. Okay, I was wondering. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure how many D's we had on advance. Be interesting comparison. Any, any uh, takeaways? I'm surprised how many lower ranked games we have on here. But at the same time, you know, they were, in, it, it's a sign of the times too. They were in a company where 
you know, you especially earlier in their in their life cycle, you put shit out, and there was there weren't as many precedents, so you have a saber wolf. They tried that way, and it didn't really work. So they, you know, games in the future could learn from that and make different decisions. So you got snake rattle and roll. Hey, maybe we try this. Oh, it didn't work. So you know, you know, they're an old company, so they have missteps because we learn from them. So I, I don't think it's necessarily a knock on them. Um, and as one company, they have two S rank games. That's pretty freaking good. So I think it's it it's a little misleading to to look at this as is, but it it's still interesting to see their history. Yeah, it's weird too because even if you look at the S rank games, like they're some like not they're not the the series themselves are not necessarily perfect you know banjo pilot mm. i mean uh, <laughs> you know but um i i still respect them i respect the legacy the fact that they're a company with s tier games is impressive you know not a lot of gaming companies really can say that i feel like how many banjo kazooies you come with? donkey kong countries you know mm-hmm. those are some of our favorite yeah. games did yeah? Did we mention Diddy Kong Racing with this, with this DK? I acknowledged it, but I don't think we talked yeah. about it. Well, it's it's there too. <laughs> Just for anybody that is wondering, it's it's also in there. <laughs> yeah. Well, and interestingly enough, it kind of ties Banjo and Country together, Donkey Kong together, which is like an S tier bridge. <laughs> Just throw Diddy Kong's face up there. <laughs> Wait, it already is. All right, guys. <laughs> So I think I'm the only person here that's played the majority of these. I think the only few I haven't played is like Cameo. I need to play some more of. And... Is that it? Probably nothing. Oh, Connect Sports. Well, you've, you've played um, the most, but I, I have played a majority. Yeah, but I'm saying, but I, but I wanted to ask the question, you guys, are there any, like having done this, are there are there any games now that you are interested in trying out? Blast Core. Oh, you got it, bro. That's, that's a good that's a game. Good game. Yeah. I vote um, Saber Wolf for Spencer. Um, no. I... <laughs> uh, you might like it. Dude. Yeah. It has progression. It has. You're gonna be... It has a purpose. You know, <laughs> maybe she was right. You know, you never know. Maybe she saw something we did. Um, I. I want to say Mickey Speedway. And maybe Jet Force Gemini, I would retry. So, yeah. Come get us, Star Fox fans. I stand by my positions. I've done three narrative yeah. analyses for Star Fox games. I've I've never been able. Like, even when I was younger and, like, I knew people that, like, liked that game, I've always been like, yeah, it's a cool game if you like that sort of thing. <laughs> I don't want to play it. <laughs> I was I was a little older when that came out, and I was I remember they announced like all these cool games like Mario Sunshine. I don't and maybe I'm wrong on the timeline of this, but this is how it fits in my head. Like there's like Mario Sunshine, Super Smash Bros. Melee, and they're like and then Star Fox. And I looked at that and I'm like, huh? <laughs> like what? <laughs> why is it's like it it's like an action game. It's like why? That's Weird. It's like Ocarina of Time if you just like erased the decent plot of Ocarina of Time and was like I don't know, Star Fox is there with a dinosaur. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's just like this is somewhat interesting. <laughs> Sounds like it maintains Rare's cynicism. <laughs> uh-uh. Dinosaur like... Planet might have been interesting. Like it was de- being developed for the N sixty four. Like everything about it just like that's honestly Miyamoto probably predicted the Microsoft treatment and was like foreshadowing it. I don't know because he he, he he fucked that game up. He's the one that was like, "Your main character is a fox. We already have a fox. Make great. him fox." Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I was like, "Great, you <laughs> fucked up the whole game, Miyamoto. Good job, buddy." <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. It, 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 it's so funny too. Like, um, if you play Assault. Like some of the stuff, because like Adventures brings in Tricky and like Crystal and stuff, and the characters that are in other games, and like they are like you know like those stuff carry over to uh, Assault and um, Command, but they're so like they gloss over so much of the adventure stuff though. They're just like, hey, look, it's Dinosaur Planet. Okay, go 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 go. 
<laughs> like, like it's like every Star Fox game after that was like like canonically after was like yeah the characters are here but we're not we're done with that. <laughs> it's one of those flyover stages. Yeah, exactly. You use the boost to get through. Cool. Well, we really rared it up. We will be mapping out a game represented on this table next week. Is it, hey, it's Mr. Pants? Find out then. Why'd you spoil it? <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't read to. <laughs> now everybody knows. We're, all, we're just going to wear underwear for that episode? On our heads. And a hat? I think it's what he wears. A hat. Like a hat and underwear. And we're going to start the episode with, hey, it's Mr. Pants. Hey, Mr. Pants. <laughs> yeah, guest, guest appearance by Mr. Pants himself. I'll animate him. Hey, it's Mr. Pants map out <laughs> can't be Mr. hard. Pants. He, he looks like he was drawn by a, by a fucking four-year-old. <laughs> you can use your second <laughs> monitor to make a VTuber avatar and then like run over to the avatar. Oh. Hey, it's Mr. Pants. <laughs> oh, hey, guys. That's true. I'm Mr. Pants. <laughs> Very excited to be mapping does, out does, my game. I'm, I'm guessing it's since it's Game Boy Advance, he doesn't have a, a voice, right? I mean, he oh, could, but I mean, maybe we can website for, for good or something. We can get our own voice for him. So we think he's calling the in. Mascot. Hey guys, Mr. Pants is calling in. <laughs> oh hey, Pants. hey, Mr. Pants. That's a good voice, actually. <laughs> hey guys, did you p- put yeah, up we your said pants that. today? Yes. Good. We'll check your pockets. Oh. Okay. Did you find it? There's nothing in them. No. Did you steal from me? Oh, maybe I took it out of my pocket. Let me check my pockets because I'm Mr. Pants. Yeah, check out your pants. pants. Oh, look what I found. (laughs) Oh. No. Now everyone knows my secret. I'm not wearing pants. Yeah. <laughs> Alex couldn't commit. Weighing to that out the entire podcast. <laughs> <laughs> He's just flapping in the wind. The answer, my friend, kind of dra- is flapping <laughs> in the wind. Kind of drafty in here. <laughs> the answer is flapping in the wind. Wind. I make a joke, but I forgot. The answer, my friends, is in my pants again. The answer is in Mr. Pants. <laughs> yeah, it is Mr. Pants. So we'll, we'll map that out for you guys. Do you guys think uh, Digger T. Rock would have made S rank? Let me take a look. Uh, making him dig is fun. Clearing out the spaces. Constantly having to swat bugs takes away from digging and crawling and simping? Simping? <laughs> Jumping. Oh. Jumping is what it says. It looks like something else. She gives it a B, so no, I don't think it would have gotten the S ranking you're looking for. Okay. That sucks. You just put it in S anyway. I don't have the picture. Oh. Can we edit that in? Somebody want to edit that in? Uh, no, I'm doing the edits for this. I'm not doing that. Oh, jeez. I really want to know more about Fine, men. fine. I'll do it. Look, it's there. It's there now. I did it. Let me, let me do work. I think it's Spencer. <laughs> Can Confirm you also for put lazy. in a picture of meningococcal meningitis while you're at it? Meningococcal meningitis. Can I just put in a picture of Goku? And That's close enough, right? Meningoku. There he is. Come here, Hame. It's about go. time. Come here, Hame. Meningitis. <laughs> Let us know in the comments below which games you would put in what ranking. Um, and just before you hit that enter button, just erase the entire comment because we don't care. This is our this is our rank. Rip. Okay, you can you can send us a comment. DM Alex on Discord. 
<laughs> no! <laughs> no, DM uh, Brian. Tell him to play Gex. <laughs> DM Brian a full review game. of uh, Saberwolf. It's the great gex of 2022. Let us know if you disagree with our any of our assessments. And if you want to play Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Let us know if, is, if, if you want to play Sea of Thieves. Yeah. Is Terry a rare fan? No. You know, I don't think so. You'd think he would like it. Like, it's, it's even in his... Like, it's local. He likes to play local. <laughs> What, okay, that that's a good thing to end on. Which game do you think Terry would like? Let's Which game would game you Terry. recommend to Terry 309? Yeah, which game would you recommend to Terry? None. I'm going Blast Corpse. Yeah, I was literally going to say Blast Corpse. He seems like a guy that wants to tear the yeah, world down. Yeah, I, I think he'd be a Blast Corpse guy. <sighs> Certainly not Viva Pinata. Um... Bullshit. <laughs> it's certainly not Sea of Thieves. I think we'd get an essay on that one. Uh, yeah. No, I agree with you guys. Blast Corpse. Blast Corpse is good. Derek likes it. Terry, you know, so. leave your uh, Blast Corpse review below, please. Thank you. Thank you for your service. Terry. Next time, we'll be mapping out a game. Bye, everybody. I love you. Have a good day. I stopped. Hey y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.